Hey guys, it's Hunter with Laser Key Products. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, the setup of the engraving jaw for the 3D Extreme S2. Uh, so you'll receive the engraving jaw, and you'll notice the dovetail will match the profile that is machined out on the X table. So make sure that you have the appropriate base on your engraving jaw. You're just going to loosen the red T knob, lift your shoulder stop, uh, and the tip stop up and just gonna slide the vise off. Make sure it's nice and clean. You grab your engraving jaw, and then you're gonna have a stop extension. You're gonna go ahead and slide that until it touches the screw. And then you're gonna slide this vise on. Go ahead and tighten the red T knob. At this point, you wanna make sure that you calibrate the jaw before you start engraving. So you're gonna grab your LKP 1.7 stylus. I'm going to put that in the collet. Let's put it all the way up. Tighten the collet. And after you get the software installed, you'll have a 3D Extreme S engraving icon. Just double click that. Alright, so once the software initiates at the top, you'll have operations, and then we have an engraving. Go ahead and select that, and then at the very right tab, you click on settings, and this is your setup values for the calibration coordinates and for the default settings. So for the S2, uh, we can go ahead and zoom in here. These are the numbers needed. So if your numbers aren't there, uh, go ahead and put these numbers in. And if you do have to make any changes to these numbers, you want to make sure you hit update engraving settings once you make the change. Uh, but you really don't want to mess with these unless you attempt the calibration and they don't match up. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and click calibrate engraving jaw cutter. And we're going to click yes, and it's going to proceed to the calibration process. And it's got a touch down on the flat part, right by the E, anywhere. And then it's going to lift up, touch that first step. And then it's going to come up and touch the back of the vise. Alright, so it went through a successful calibration process. So we am going to go ahead and put our cutter in. Alright, so for the 3D Extremes and the 3D Pros, you're going to have a collet adapter. So you have a double-sided cutter, it slips into the collet adapter, and then that goes into this, the collet, and then we're going to put that back and tighten it into place. Alright, so in the software, um, we're going to go to key engraving and you just search the term of the key blank reference so we're going to do SE1 and then you'll just match it up to the profile of the key that you're doing uh, so I'm going to look at my key right here and go to one that matches up and we got one right there so these match up and I'll have a Y1 position right here and that's telling the key machine that from the top of the key, 550 thousandths of an inch down is where it's going to start engraving the characters. All right, so right here we have the key width, 980 thousandths. So that's just the measurement of how wide the key is. And step two, this is telling us what step is going to go on the vise. So we got one, two, and three. So I know I need to go in step two. So open up the vise enough to fit the key. Slide it all the way back. Make sure it's nice and straight. All right, go ahead and clamp on it. And I can see I got a little bit of angle. So go ahead and readjust that. All right. So once you got that going, um, we're gonna go ahead and make the font smaller. So I'm gonna do 93 thousandths of an inch. 
this is the Z-axis uh, adjustment toggle bar. So if you want to make the machine go deeper on the Z-axis and engrave more into the key, you make it a positive integer. Uh, the opposite goes for uh, the negative integer that's going to actually make it go higher. So if you want to kind of test where the location is, uh, where it's going to engrave, you can go ahead and set it to a negative integer and that's going to tell the machine to actually hover above the key blank um, during the engraving process. All right, so right here, we're going to type what we want to write. So I'm going to put laser key. And then you don't want to put anything on the second line if you have a zero value. Uh, keep in mind the zero coordinate is at the top of the key. Uh, so you actually have to put a coordinate in if you want a second line. Uh, we'll go over that after I do the first one. So I'm going to set this to the zero default. Uh, and then I'm going to hit engrave. Alright, so you can see we have laser key engraved on it. Alright, so say you want to do a second line. That's where you're going to want to get some calipers. Or you can also use the vise itself. I'll show you here in a little bit. I'm going to zero it out. And basically, we're getting the measurement of where we want to start that bottom line. So I'm going to do it right here at 791, so 791 thousandths of an inch. That's where it's going to start this bottom of the second line. And you can also match it up with the jaw vise if you don't have any calipers. And you can see right above it, the 8 would be a good place. So 791, that corresponds to what we measured with the calipers. So we're going to clean our vise. And we're gonna go ahead and clamp it on step two again. Nice and straight. And then for a Y2 position right here, we're gonna do 791. And then we're gonna put products here. All right, and then we're gonna hit engrave. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this since we've already engraved that. All right, so it's taking into account the actual width of the key at its widest point. So you've got to be cognizant of if you're going to make a second line, you got to take into account the width of where you're doing it. So for that one, I'm only going to allow, uh, let's say, three characters. So I'm going to put pro. So at this point, I'm going to hit engrave, and that should allow it to center. Okay, so it didn't really go too deep into the key, so that's where the Z axis toggle bar is going to come into effect. So I click on the depth adjustment toggle bar, and I'm going to make it go two thousandths of an inch deeper. Here, go ahead and show right here. So right here, this toggle bar, I moved it from the default zero to two, and then I'm going to hit engrave, and that's.
So we'll have some more videos that go more in depth into it, but um, that should get you started.